So, hi. Uh, around two months ago, I talked about thinking in React. Uh, and now I'm here to give you the update to that, because there's more to it. Uh, in particular, we got this thing called signals that I want to introduce to you. And uh, let's just jump right into it. So uh, what we saw in kind of two months ago was, well, we can use state and then we can have this button that, for instance, kind of shows the value of that state. And then whenever you click the button, it increments it. So it works like this uh, very kind of basic React usage. Uh, what signals does is you can do exactly the same thing because, I mean, you definitely want to have counting buttons in your business application, and you definitely want to have it in multiple ways also. So let's see what that looks like. So um, you can have a signal, for instance, let's call it count, and uh, it's just use signal, and then we give it a default value. So very similar, or kind of similar. And then if you duplicate this line to use that signal, uh, the thing with signal is kind of, you just got one signal, it's a holder of the value rather than the value in itself. So in, in that way, it's quite different from state. So to actually increment here, we just do count dot value plus plus plus. And then also to use it here, we do count dot value. And let's change this label also. So this is our count. So now we've got two different buttons that behave in quite exactly the same way. You can click them and it increases the count. Uh, what we notice here is that with either of these buttons, whenever I click it, we get one more render logged here in the console because whenever this view function is, is called, it, it logs render again. The first part of the trick with signals is that we don't need to reference dot value in this kind of case. So now we actually have a situation where it doesn't render again when I click count because uh, what this does is that internally it creates a kind of, of wrapper component, and then only that wrapper component needs to be updated. But this kind of parent component, the whole signals view, doesn't need to be updated when the value changes because nothing in this component use, actually uses the value. Uh, of course, this leads to some interesting things, like for instance, if I here now would log, log this count, uh, we see that it's not actually the value, but it's some internal obfuscated object that actually keeps track of, of dependencies and so on. Uh, if I instead count, uh, log uh, count dot value, then what we get, well, then we obviously get the value and get it twice because of dev mode. But uh, now what happens is that whenever I click the button, now this render function depends on the value of this signal. So therefore it's run again, which in this case shows as, as actually logging again and again and again. Uh, so that's kind of, that's one key things with signals that, that it's only when you reference the value that you get a dependency to that signal. And this is tracked completely automatically. So you don't need to worry about it. Uh, one thing you often want to do is you want to have some kind of derived value. So for instance, let's say, again, a very common business app use case, I want to have also half of this count. So uh, let's round it also, uh, count divided by two. And then, okay, we need to use the value. Uh, thanks to TypeScript, we realized that. And then now we just put it here in the button, for instance. So now what we get is, well, like we see, if you get to higher numbers, every second click, the second number incre increments, but the first number always increments. But also, like we see, we're now again kind of logging render over and over and over, over again. So uh, let's let's fix this by instead of directly computing this, we wrap this this as a computed signal. So then we do kind of use computed, and here we give it a callback. Uh, actually, I need the arrow also like this. So now we've got exactly the same half every second update thing, but we only render this component once now because this computer signal is, is kind of updated when needed. And then since we use the, the signal here, here, then it's that part is still updated. If you now again log the value, we will see that it only logs 
when the value actually changes. So only every second click again, because now this render function, it depends on the value of this half signal. It doesn't depend directly on the value of this count signal because that's that's only this wrapper component, but this signals view render function depends on that value. So whenever that value changes, then it's run again and, and we log this uh, or run a log statement. Another thing we can also notice if we change this callback to log, uh, you shouldn't do this because these should be kind of pure functions, no side effects and so on. Uh, but just for the sake of the example, let's just log something here. We see now that obviously every time I click the button, the callback needs to be run again to evaluate this. Did this computed value change or not? Sometimes it did, sometimes it didn't, but it always needs to run the callback to see that. Uh, what we also notice is if if I completely remove the usage of the count of the half signal. Even though I kind of set up this computation, it's never run. So we never log half here now, no matter what I do, because the computation is actually only evaluated if the system notices that it's the value is used somewhere. And that's through actually having a ref reference to through the value of the signal. Let's just remove that so we get prettier code, like so. So basically, that's very, very simplified what you do with signals. It's it's a, an alternative to use state. You can do the same things with it. It's a slightly different syntax. You get this op performance optimization that it doesn't need to rerun the render method. And that's it, except of course, there's more to it. Because the true power with signals comes from the fact that you can share a signal instance between components. So um, I have created a simple component. It's a, a signal button. Uh, we give it a signal, for instance, count. And then we give it a label here also, like for instance, count. And then we can remove these other buttons. Now we just got this one count button. It behaves exactly the same way. I mean, the implementation here is basically what we already saw. It's just a button with a click listener that increments the signal value and then it well it shows the label that I gave it and the actual signal value. So nothing super fancy here. It's just convenience. Uh, but the point here is that now we're passing, we're not passing the value of the signal, but we're passing the signal to this count um, to this button, which means that the button is also able to update the value if it wants to, if we let it. Uh, the next thing we'll see is uh, let's also add a half button. So now we got kind of what we already had. I can click the button and it increments the value and then the half value is updated every second time. But now if I click the half button, we see that, oh, we got an exception. Basically, cannot set the property because there's only a getter but no setter. Uh, because if we really check, we notice that this is now a read-only signal kind of TypeScript wise. And the typing is a little bit weird there. So you can still use a read only signal where you would use a signal. So you can still assign it and so on. But anyways, at runtime, it actually prevents you from updating this, which also means that if I wanted to have this, this kind of button, it can use the signal and be smart about updates based on it, but it cannot itself update the value. Then I can just pass a dummy computed signal that just passes through the value. Mm, but there's more to it than this, of course. Uh, we can actually remove this line also. Uh, because what we now notice is, uh, well, now we uh, incremented it to three. If I navigate to some other view in the application and then I navigate back, then the value has reset because obviously this signal instance is using a hook. It's managed by the signals view. What I can do though, is I can move this outside of the React render component uh, render function and change it to be kind of a, a regular signal rather than a signal hook. Uh, so what this means is that this signal instance, it's now owned and kind of part of the life cycle of this whole uh, JavaScript file. So whenever this is loaded, it's initialized and the value isn't reinitialized until the file is loaded again. So what this means is, well, we can do the same clicking, but now if I navigate to another view, 
and navigate back. It hasn't changed because it's still in, in, in the browser kind of JavaScript engine, this module is still loaded. It's not reloaded just because I navigate back and forth. But if I reload the page, then the JavaScript module is initialized again, and then we reset the value. Uh, let's also, uh, one thing to clarify kind of is that this use signal hook that I used, it's, its only purpose is to make it possible to create a signal inside a React render function without creating the value again and again and again every time we render. So what the use signal hook does is just to reuse an existing instance for that given component instance. Whereas if, if I would create two components side by side or something, then there would be two instance of a signal. Whereas here I use the kind of regular signal creation function, and then it's it's just run once, so, so I don't need anything more. Uh, we can do the same with the computed thing also, and it's the same thing, just drop the use keyword and well, nothing changed now, so let, let's not even test. So in this way, we can kind of share a signal, so a, a holder of this value between these two different components, for instance, and then it's kind of, it's following the life cycle of, of that signal instance. And we can share this even more widely. So if I, ex if I export this, for instance, and then I open main layout, which is kind of showing this header. So here, for instance, if I now uh, import this and, and use it, then we got also now kind of a different part of the application automatically reacts to changes from this component. This is, of course, not how you should do it. This is terrible architecture. You should probably define your shared signals in a kind of top level class or module and then import that into all the places rather than having this thing where kind of a, the main layout indirectly depends on one of the views because that's 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 not good architecture. Uh, but anyways, this is just a simple simple way of showing showing what kind of things you can do with this architecture. Uh, let's remove this because it uh, this export causes a uh, hot module reload to not be happy. So I don't want to use it for the following examples. Uh, so what we did see here, we did see that yes, you can share signal values or the kind of signal instance is itself, which is the value holder. You can share that between different parts of the application and that makes it really easy to share things that should be updated. For instance, kind of if you have, what's the current logged in user and then you want to show, show kind of react to changes to that in different places or, I mean, there, there's lots of use cases and with regular react and kind of use state, you would use this thing called uh, use context and it's quite straightforward to use, but this is even simpler basically. And also compared to use context, it, gives the same benefit that you can kind of optimize so it doesn't need to re-render all the things, but only the things that actually use the values that have changed. Mm. Next thing on my list is called effects. So uh, let's remove this logging and instead add logging here. So just log count dot count dot value like so, and we see, oh, actually, let's add a label here also. So this is count, and it's a value. So we see that it log it's logged once. And now, I mean, this line of code, it's run once when this module is loaded. So even if I change the value now, it obviously doesn't update. But what I can do is I can wrap this as an effect. So uh, the effect takes basically a callback. And now what this does is that this is run once, when the module is loaded. And based on that, when it's run, the runtime detects that, ooh, this thing actually depends on the value of the count signal. So then it sets up a dependency. And whenever the value of the count signal changes, this callback is run again. So now we get kind of every time I click, this callback is run again, and it logs a new value for us. Mm. We can also, for instance, change this to look at the half signal instead. And now we get, again, kind of every second time I click, so click, 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 click. Every second time I click, this is run again, because now this depends on the value of the half signal, 
and that's not updated for every click. So in this way, this is kind of this is smart about when it needs to update things and so on. Next thing we can see is if we log two things here. So we log both the count and the half count. Uh, so now every time I click, it logs two things. But we also notice even though bo both the count signal and the half signal value is updated, it's still only logged once for each click. So it's it's still kind of smart enough in this case when it's computed signal to wait until everything is updated. If you have multiple kind of actual signals, you can wrap the changes in a transaction, and then that would, would also run the effect only once. Uh, but that's not needed here. Next thing we can do, uh, we're going to need another signal for doing that. So let's call it, for instance, pick for picking which signal we want to actually log. Uh, and let's also add, add a button for it. So like so. Uh, so now we've got yet another thing we can increment. And then the trick I want to use is to, is to make this logging conditional. So uh, basically, uh, uh, pick dot value. So what this means now is that kind of if the value is divisible by two, then we log the count, and otherwise we log the half count. So what this means now is that, no, actually it's the other way around. Anyways, uh, now initially we logged count, and if I click the count button, then every time it updates. Now when I click pick, uh, because this, this effect, now it depends on the pick signal value, and the count signal value. So if I click pick, the pick signal value runs, uh, changes. So this callback is run again. Now it locks the half value. And now this effect is no longer depending on the count value. So if I click count again, nothing happens because this only depends now on pick and half. So now if I click again, half changes and then it logs. Uh, so in this way, I mean, I can now kind of switch back and forth. And every time this callback is run, its latest dependencies is what's actually used. So you don't need to care about kind of cleaning up any things. Uh, you don't need to, to kind of unsubscribe in any case or in almost any case, because it's always just depending on whatever you depended on the previous time. An effect like this was called, or then, I mean, technically behind the scenes, what happens with React render functions is also that they kind of they become effects, and whenever anything that this render function depends on changes, then the effect also is run again, which means that the component is rendered again. Mm. The last thing here is that in some cases you still want to explicitly clean up. So uh, what actually happens is that this effect it returns a callback, which is it's just a thing that returns void. So we can, for instance, here create a button on click. We, oops, on click, we do clean up and then clean up. And oh, that's why it didn't autocomplete for me. So now what happens is I click the button, it logs. When I click clean up, it cancels this effect. So this is no longer active, which means that if I click count again and again and again, it doesn't matter how many times I click it, it still doesn't log anything more because this effect has now been cleaned up after I click the button. What's next on my list? So yeah, uh, these are all the kind of basic signal features. We haven't implemented this. This is just a third party library that integrates very nicely with React. Uh, we will update Hilla starting from the March release to have these things as built-in features, we will, in documentation, recommend using it and so on. But there's more to it, but it's not ready yet, so that will come in an upcoming release. Because what, what, what I've shown so far is kind of, yeah, you got these signals, you can share them, share the signal instance in different ways, and then it synchronizes the value of that signal between everyone who depends on it. But this is JavaScript, it's kind of, it's always just within your browser tab. But 
we got this Hilla thing that is a full stack framework. So what if we could share signal values through the server, for instance, with other users? So uh, I've got a counter service here, which got a counter method, which returns a signal. Uh, and what this means now is, um, well, now the value happens to be 14, and now it's 18. And because this is synchronous with the server, if I reload the page, it still fetches that 18 value from the server also the next time. This is, of course, not super exciting on its own. Uh, when it gets cool, though, is uh, if I open a new browser tab, let's close this so I can have them side by side, because this browser tab uses exactly the same values. If I click the button in one of the tabs, it immediately also updates in the other one. So this is kind of, for instance, this is a way of doing anything that you can do with collaboration kit in a really smooth way. Uh, it can be used, for instance, for kind of reacting to changes to a database so that you immediately, instantly update the right things in a grid or all those kinds of things. One thing, though, to notice here is that now we are synchronizing values between multiple servers. Uh, and and the challenge here is latency. So I actually also I have I have a delayed counter signal. It's exactly the same data. It's just kind of for testing purposes. It actually has a delay to to propagating the update. So if I click now here, I see it immediately. But uh, let's click again. It takes a couple of seconds before the other tab also reacts to this. Uh, this leads to the effect that kind of if if I now kind of if two users at the same time would click buttons, uh, and I need to be quick to make this happen. So click, OK, and click twice in that also. Uh, then we actually we sort of flicker a little bit here, because now both of these tab had said that, let's set the value to 28. They didn't say up, increment the value. They said, set the value to 28. So the value is 28, even though the number of clicks now is actually 30. Uh, so to be able to deal with this, we need a little bit more API. Uh, so this count also has an update method. Let's actually increment. Let's reuse this thing. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to do count.update. Uh, and this is, um, mm -mm -mm. this is a callback. So here I can get, no, actually I get the value, and then I return value plus 1. So now it can kind of transactionally update this thing. And if the framework behind this detects that, ooh, someone else also did a conflicting update, then it will rerun this callback again and again and again, as many times as are needed. So now, actually, when we see the same thing, I click twice, and I click twice, then uh, things will, oh, do I need to save and refresh also? Uh, Click twice, click twice, and now it takes a while for the messages to. Oh, I should click the increment button. Well done. Uh, so I increment twice and I increment twice. Now it actually works so that then after these messages, I mean, this is on purpose, very slow just to see it, but let's do it again because we see uh, both say 38, and then at some point one really says, no, it's 40, and then later on, because that one then says that, oh, by the way, it became 40, but my clicks weren't considered. No, 38, I mean, my clicks weren't considered. So then it sent those again. And then after that, everyone eventually syncs up to seeing everything as 40. So this is what you can do with shared signals or kind of full stack signals, we want to call them. So these are signals that are synchronized through the whole stack. They can be type safe. They can have more complex values and so on. Just a very quick demo of one example, what we can do with this. Again, something you want in every business application so that you share the cursor location from one tab to the other tab. And this isn't many lines of code uh, to, to be able to share this. And again, thanks to the way signals work, it's, it's kind of, it's really efficient. It doesn't even if there would be 50 cursors visible here and only one of them moving, then it would only 
without anything special in the actual application logic, it would still only when that cursor moves, it wouldn't need to, to update all the other cursors and, and those kinds of things. So that's, that's just a simple demo of kind of how, oops, how, how cool these, these signals are. The last thing I want to very, very briefly mention is that maybe we want to have signals in flow as well. So, I mean, the API would be quite similar. You kind of create a signal in your, in your component. I mean, this is of course Java, so you do new signal instead of using some fancy factory methods. You can create a computed signals, very straightforward to, to get a label in this case. Uh, there might be some alternatives way like just mapping over one signal value to get a computed signal, maybe a shorthand for creating a formatted string, maybe using GAP430 string templates that is currently in preview to, to have this kind of syntax where you can use placeholders and so on. But then the point being, this is still, what would be needed is that the button label, instead of being a string, it could also be a string signal. And with these changes throughout, you could also use the same mechanism in flow. And of course, the same thing, if you want to make it collaborative, uh, now we got a collaborative click thing here as well, because now this signal instance is actually shared between all the users of this class. And of course, these signals are thread safe and so on. Even if you want to share this with, with your Hilla users, you can even import the same counter service kind of backing signal. And then you can even kind of collaboratively share UI state between flow views and Hilla views without anything special. So those are all of the signal things that, that I have in mind that I wanted to share with you. So the key point really is a signal is just it's a holder of a value and that value, you can update it and anyone who depends on that value is automatically subscribing to updates in a way that you don't, in most cases, you don't need to care about cleaning things up, releasing things, unsubscribing and so on. This is a good replacement for use state and use context in React. Uh, and that's what we will be shipping in, in Hilla in, in the March release. Then slightly later, uh, we will also turn this into full stack signals. So then you can synchronize signal values through the server with other users. And then maybe potentially even later, uh, we haven't really decided anything about this yet. We might also bring the same experience to flow users so that they can also use the same signal mechanism and even share signal values also with Hilla users. So that's signals and thank you for watching.